What is up YouTube, McIntyre here. Today I want to bring you guys a new video talking about Varian. This is a hero that, as you guys have probably noticed, has been being picked more and more often in the HCC Pro Leagues for all regions. And today I wanted to bring you guys a video talking about why he's picked so much and go over his builds and kind of how you want to play this hero. So to begin, I want to kind of talk about why he's chosen so much in the HCC and where it kind of came from. So originally, Varian was a pick that a few teams were taking, and this was in the first few weeks of HCC. Team Noventic and B-Step, which is my current team, was choosing this hero over things like ETC and Diablo. At the time, those were the priority picks for Warriors. And what essentially happened was with the popularity of bans on these heroes, Varian kind of became the next best stun tank. And so a lot of teams kind of visited the idea and tried to, you know, is, is Varian good? And some teams even considered him to be a very weak tank. And it wasn't until the Korean HEC League started up where Varian was first picked, I want to say, or picked in the 1-2 slot for second pick. And this was when people started, you know, kind of to realize that maybe this is a really good pick if the Korean Pro League, I think it was even like L5, which was is is and was considered the best team in the game, took it. So everyone's like, wait, what just happened? Um, and I think a lot of the reason that Varian is so powerful beyond the fact that he has a point and click one second stun and a point and click 1.5 second taunt is because of his 13 talents. And I think these talents are what basically push Varian to be a top tier hero. Um, as you all know, with Tassadar, Zarya, and Mediv being heroes in the game, it's very frustrating at time to deal with spamming of shields. And I think with Varian, if you choose this hero, at 16, you have an answer finally to these shields with Shattering Throw. And, you know, now seeing this kind of come to life, it really makes a lot more sense to me because not only is he incredibly powerful at, you know, locking targets down from the earliest stage at level four to even the later game, but he also has a pseudo way to deal with shields. And not only that, but he also can deal with healing pretty well too with his heroic strikes. So things like ancestral healing, Palm, these are all abilities that are often used and this hero kind of counters. Um, you know, and, and that kind of goes on even more to, you know, what else does he do? Well, he gives you Banner of Iron Forge, 25% damage reduction within the area of your totem, which is an absurd thing to think about, right? A 25% armor within totem range during a team fight. And I don't know exactly how much health this totem has. It doesn't really say it. But this totem lasts 12 seconds, which is a team fight, right? So if the other team doesn't AoE this thing down, then not only do you get 25%, but everyone around you gets 25%, which is a big deal when you pair it with other abilities. Um, and not only that, but we also have Glory to the Alliance at level 20. This decreases the cooldown of this banner by 20 seconds, putting it at a 25 second cooldown. So it's possible to get this thing off once, twice, even three times in a team fight. Not only that, but your base regen is increased. It's almost like a healing ward and all the healing your allies receive is increased by 50%. So it's just a disgusting, disgusting healing ward at level 20. That's almost up 100% of the time. Considering it lasts 12 seconds when you use it, it should be up in around 12 to 13 seconds when it falls. So all of these things combined give us Varian, which is why everyone's taking him. Just the the several powerful kit things that he has, if you bring them all together when you think about them, are really powerful. Um, but besides that, there are weaknesses to this hero. Magic damage is a problem for him. As you guys know, parry basically gives him evasion, Illidan evasion. 
for 1.25 seconds, right? which is pretty, pretty insane when you think about it because he has two charges of it and the charges cool down every eight seconds. So really powerful talent, but it does not deal with magic damage. And if we look at his 13 talent, unlike s some other tanks, he gets no spell shield, right? So there's nothing for him to really deal with spell damage. And that's just everywhere in his kit, right? So dealing with Varian most of the time has to be, he has to be dealt with with magic damage. So we're seeing, that's where things like, for me, Chromie come into play. Uh, Li Ming is really powerful against him, things like that, right? But it just so happens that Chromie and Li Ming are also really powerful with him. So if you do take Varian, you have the chance or the ability to also pick one of these mages that is good against him for your own so the other team can't have that pick, right? And that's where, you know, originally, even with our team, I think we played in HGC a Varian Li Ming draft and a lot of it had to do with that sort of strength. So now that we've talked about Varian, I, I want to super quickly go over his build and the two builds that I think are the best for him. And then I'll upload another gameplay video that you can click on in the description or it will also be at the end of the video that you can watch me play a game with Varian. So level one, we have two different options here. Depending on the other team, if the other team has something like Tychus, something like Sonya, something like Tracer, even the new Tassadar, Zarya, right? These really quick attacking heroes. I really like overpower. This basically every time you parry, you get a crit, your heroic strike just comes off cooldown and you crit. So you can just crit over and over with parry up. And this talent works really well with his seven talent, Live by the Sword. So Live by the Sword increases your parry by 40%. So I think it, I believe it makes it a two second, two seconds some change parry. So you have four and 50 cents, let's say, worth of parry after you use Live by the Sword twice. But when you parry at least two basic autos, your cooldown of it is reduced by two seconds. Because it's on an eight second cooldown, if you have four seconds of parry, you decrease the cooldown of it by four seconds. If you parry two attacks per parry, you can essentially get three parries off in a team fight and you're critting the whole time. So level one overpower, level seven live by the sword is if you're against the fast attacking heroes and you will be getting off parries. Um, against teams that do not have a lot of autos, maybe mages, we want to take Lion's Maul. So this is going to increase the slow and the duration of your slow by two seconds. I think for me, the, or two, two seconds, sorry. So for me, the duration is very important. And so is the percentage. You get 15% slow and an additional 0.5 seconds. So really powerful. Something you want to set out to stack up when the game starts. You should just focus on that quest even if you're just randomly throwing a Q at the enemy's tank. At four, we're going to take Warbringer. This is the OP, OP talent. Uh, a lot of people complain about this talent, and I think they should. Uh, basically turns your E into a, what is that? Eight second point and click, one second stun. And I'll use that on the target dummy right here. That's that. Obviously, we have heroes like Murden that have to land a skill shot that can be blocked. At about the same range, not Varian. Varian is gonna always land his stun. And this goes to this is this is also important if you're against Varian. If you are in this range, as we're looking at right now, you will get stunned. There's just there's no other statement to be made about that. So watch your positioning against Varian. Unlike ETC and Murden, where they have to actually land the skill, this guy doesn't. So if you're this close, just like Diablo. They're gonna hit you. So be careful of that when you're positioning against the variant. So at level seven, if we're not taking the parry build, we are gonna take second wind. So this is going to give us 1% of our max health every auto attack. And this is really good because of our level 10, taunt. So let me take some damage from the boss super quick. So as you guys can see, without my level 10 talent, I'm getting 47 health per auto and when we take this we're gonna get an additional 60% health so now I'm getting 75 health and auto 
just think about that, right? Like after 10 autos, you heal yourself for 750 health. What this talent really ends up doing for you is it allows you to jungle with Varian without taking any damage. So outside of the fact that you now sustain while you're hitting the camp, you can also parry the enemy camps kind of damage on you, right? Basically it allows you to do camps without taking any damage. Also, you know, it has the second part of it. Once you're below 50%, you start healing for 50% of the damage you deal. So if you're getting your heroic strike crits, you will be healing during that time period, which is really nice. At 13, I already talked about this, Banner of Ironforge. For me, I put this on my F key, but you can really put it wherever. Just make sure that you have it on a key bind that's comfortable for you when the team fight starts. And the other thing to remember about this is you want to place it depending on where the fight is going. So if the fight is, oh, as I smash my key bind, let's reset or where is that toggle cooldowns? Okay, so it's, as the fight's going, if the fight's going upwards, let's say I'm chasing down someone and they're running up, right? I don't want to throw the banner behind me because if I throw the banner behind me and the fight's going up, oh, I'm no longer in the banner, right? And let's say the banner is near a curse tribute, and let's say that this is the curse. All right, then, you know, I don't really want to put the banner over here either, because, you know, what if I go this way, right? Then I've now left my banner, okay? So depending on where the fight kind of is taking place, really depends on your positioning of the banner. So let's say if you are fighting around this central position, instead of putting it in the middle, maybe put it up to the top side. All right, let's say your team's kind of controlling the top side of the fight. Then you have a pretty good range of where you can fight within the banner, right? And let's say, you know, you're chasing them down. Let's say I'm stunning this guy and we're gonna go after him. Then I wanna put my banner in front of me. So now I have all this space to chase and still be within my banner, right? And this, this goes the same for if I'm running away. So if they seem like they're engaging on us and we need to back up, you know, I wanna put my banner back into my team and then run through it. That way I have that full range of motion for my banner. And this is really important. A weak banner placement is a weak variant player. So you don't want to place your banner poorly or you are gonna be playing the character suboptimally. So it's a very important talent. Just wanted to go over that. Again, having it on a comfortable keybind will really go a lot of links. Like for me here, I have it on my F key. So when I E, my F key just so happens to be right beside of my E key, and I can immediately place it depending on where I want it to be at. So looking at our 16 talent, these are all very good talents. Um, if the other team has no shields, Shattering throw is useless. If the other team has weak heals, mortal strikes, not that good. Or, I guess, or slow heals, I guess I should say. So like Malfurion, Brightwing, right? Things like that aren't gonna be healing for a lot. And if the other team has heavy frontline, this talent actually gets insane value. This talent does really well against Diablo if you're trying to one-shot him. So all three of these talents are really good. I would say most of the time you're gonna end up taking mortal strike, but if you're, some, sometimes you have Varian in the double tank setup, Juggernaut's not bad if the other team doesn't have like an incredible amount of healing, right? Because then you're kind of the pseudo tank, let's say beside of a Dahaka or something along those lines, right? So all these talents are really good, really just depends on the type of game that you're in and what you're feeling. So I don't, so I know I talked about Glory of the Alliance and this talent is bonkers, boohookoos, it's craziness. Um, but Vigilance is also pretty sick against the Tychus comps and the Tracer comps because you get a second off of your taunt cooldown for every time you get hit by a basic auto. And considering your taunt's on a 16 second cooldown, like you can have your taunt up, you know, in eight seconds or something like that. So this talent is not out of reach, but I would say for the most part, we are gonna go glory to the Alliance. And then on the off chance that the other team is super heavy melee, super heavy one shot your team, sometimes you go demo shout like, it's not always, it's probably like a 10, 15% chance, but sometimes you do go it if, again, the other team is gonna try to one shot and if you get a good demo shot, then you can win the fight, right? But for the most part, this talent is just absurd. I'll take some damage super quick. 
I want to, for my own sake, see how much the just base healing is for this thing. So we'll put it on the ground. And we have a base regen of 20 health. And now Malfurion just is being such a babe. And he's walked up and healed me. And as you can see, I almost just got like full healing off of. But it was like 144 and now I'm getting tranked for like 94. So a f yeah, 50% increase in healing. Absurd. But uh, yep, so that is the Varian build. That is all you need to really know about this hero. A few super quick trip tricks that I want to talk about uh, right before I end this video and wrap it up. Uh, the first one is that you can parry tower shots and keep shots. It's something a lot of people don't know. So, yeah. You do not take damage from tower shots and keep if you parry. Um, keeps do slow you, but, you know, and you get the auto attack reduction, but you can still die a keep if you parry the shots. Uh, the second one is just your overall combo. Uh, just a quick tip that most of you probably should know, but if you don't already, when you stun, there's a little bar that spawns below the enemy's head. And what you want to do is try to taunt when that bar hits zero, right? And that, that was a pretty bad timing, but you want to practice your timing basically. So you have 100% uptime on CC. So basically it allows the other person, let's say if it's a Li Ming, she can't blink if you make sure that she's never not CC'd, right? So that's the idea. Um, the other one is if we do, let's say we get an engage, a lot of the time our engages are like stun and then we taunt and pull and then we want to run away. We don't run into them for the most part because you don't have really many escapes on variant. So once you get caught, you will die. But you can kind of just, you know, very safely like engage, hit your taunt and then run away, right? And the other person maybe pulls further into your team. Um, at the end of that combo, I typically like to throw my slow. You could throw your slow at the end, or let's say there's someone, you see like a Vala, and you clip over with your slow, then you go in for the engage, all right? And the very last tip is going to be that during the duration of your CC, you have the ability to get around your target to get a body block. So we'll show that really quickly. We're gonna stun him. We're gonna start walking around him. We're gonna taunt him. We're gonna continue to walk around him. And by the time he's out of the taunt, I should be on his backside. And now I have a body block, right? All right, so we wanna use our stun duration to get the body block. All right, so just very simple little tip that will help a lot of the times to pick up free kills for you. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I wanted to cut it a little bit shorter, but I think a lot of the information that I provided hopefully has helped you. If it has, please let me know in the comment section below. This is definitely a different type of video. I don't know. I just, it felt really natural and I went with it today. So I want you guys' opinion on this type of video. Do you like me starting like I did? Um, you know, do you like the way that this is set up? Obviously, I'm cutting the gameplays and I'm adding them as separate videos to decrease the length of the video. But I still, you know, am gonna put a gameplay at the end of this video so you can see Varian and me playing it in action. So, but for the most part, I, I wanna just jam a bunch of info about a hero into this video and then show you how he's played within the next video. But again, let me let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. Uh, you know, what do you think about Variant Two? Is this hero too over overpowered? What should Blizzard do to nerf him? Or, you know, maybe you think that they should buff him. What should they do to buff him? Uh, but that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thank you all so much for swinging by. If you are new to this channel, please make sure to throw a subscribe. Hit that subscribe button below, and please hit a like button as well. That really helps me out. You can always check me out on Twitch and Twitter. Those are both going to be located below in the description. As well as I will be trying to provide an updated tier list video very shortly. But there is a tier list document located below as well. With links to all different guide videos. And where I personally think heroes are tier wise. But that's going to be it for me today guys. Thank you all so much again. And I hopefully will see you all next video. Cheers.